Well, folks, uh, it's been quite a hunt, and I can't wait to show you all what we found. Did a couple of different sites, did some scouting, and made some great finds. Watch this. Well, what have we here? Is it the base of a shotgun shell, or is it a flat button? I don't know. I'm guessing flat button. Yeah, I see the shank spot. Anything on it? Who knows? Find out when we get home. Yep, there's the shank. All right, keep digging. Hey everybody, got a surface find here. Without looking at that, I would guess that that's a uh, Townsend uh, slicker button. But we're gonna find out. Yeah, they're white metal. Yep, that's from a slicker. Still got part of the shank on it. Yep, that's exactly what it is. All right, keep digging. Hey everybody, I just flopped out an early accordion reed. Brass case, thin brass reeds. I had iron reeds, I think it had Grass reeds, though. Cool. Keep digging. Hey, everybody. I've got another marble here. It's hiding in the bottom. Come on out. Come on out and play. There we go. Ooh, pretty. All right, I like it. Folks, I got a little tiny signal here, and you are not going to believe what just flopped out of this hole. Oh, my God. God, you know what that is, don't you? That's the top of a broken bit, boss. Wow. Oh, man. I wish the rest of that was here. Oh. Well, you know, the relics are as we find them. And all we can do is find what's there, so... Uh, I'll just keep hunting this, and uh, maybe the rest of that or more of that will turn up. All right, keep digging. Hey, everybody. What kind of oddball is this? Ah, oh, is that a Maynard? Maybe. Don't know, but it's period. My guess is a Maynard. Oddball. Huh. All right, keep digging. Hey, everybody. I don't know what this is, but it's interesting. Huh. No idea. Nameplate. Decoration. Mardi Gras doubloon. Uh, let me get two fingers on it. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. It's some sort of a decorative fitting. I don't know what it is, but I don't know whether there was a hole in it or whether it just brazed onto something, but that's what it is. Just a decorative piece. Sure sounded good. All right, keep digging. Well, I don't know what this is. Looks like a, uh... well, that may be a button. I think that's a button back or a front. it please 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 be good uh, I'm not gonna field clean that that needs some professional help all right I'll check that out when I get home keep digging hey everybody digger girl just got the suspender clip piece it's kind of nice I see his teeth on there all right keep digging hey everybody I just got a big Tom back button with the shank all right keep digging Hey folks, narrating this from home because of the uh, wind noise here. Um, but this is Shangalang's find. It's some sort of a little pewter crown. I don't know whether that went on some sort of a uh, cap or a vial or a, maybe a little tiny jar uh, or maybe even a chess piece that was made out of pewter. I have no idea, but cool find. Definitely a cool find. And here we have one of those uh, things that was uh, part of a 
cloth tape measure, uh, the kind that was uh, kind of a, in a cylinder, almost looked like a film canister. And this is the crank on the right. I would flip down and uh, like that, and then you would be able to crank it back and wind it back in. And the spindle there was brass, and it has a hole or holes in it where the, uh, where the cloth tape measure was attached to the center there. Pretty cool find. I like those things. Awesome. Keep digging. Got, uh, got two little finds here. I got a hem, hem weight, little hem weight, the bird man, and I got some sort of weird thing here. I don't know what this thing is that I dug. It looks like a bird in flight with a flag in its claws on top of a letter S or B. Looks like it had a pin back. I don't know what that is, but I'll figure it out when I get home. Keep digging. A few months ago, I recovered a brass three-hole trousers button. The button was made by two well-known clothiers named Etienne Cordeviol and Francois Lacroix, whose business was located on Charter Street in New Orleans by the 1830s. Both of these men were free persons of color whose garments had garnered widespread appeal and international acclaim, influencing French fashion both in New Orleans as well as Europe. During this era in New Orleans, race was not a determining factor in business ownership, culture, or French heritage due to the city's cosmopolitan origins. Yet by the 1840s, many free persons of color in the city felt restrictions closing in on them, and they moved north where their skills were much in demand. Cordeviol himself moved to Paris in 1849, leaving his friend and business partner behind. Sadly, Lacroix's own son, Victor Lacroix, was killed in the infamous New Orleans Massacre of 1866, where a peaceful protest by black freedmen was set upon by white rioters, including armed police and firemen, as well as former Confederate soldiers. After the massacre, Francois Lacroix supported his son's widow, a white woman named Sarah Brown, as well as their two children. Deeply affected by his son's death, Lacroix was a participant in seances to try and communicate with him. Amazingly, in the same field where my button was dug, my wife dug a three-hole brass clothing button, which, once cleaned, bore the initials C and L. Being the same size as my button, with the same number of holes, and having been found in that same exact field, this mystery C and L button is without a doubt a second variety of Cordeviol and Lacroix, which was affixed to a garment which the two sold between the years of 1830 and 1849. Hey everybody, it's time for the finds wrap up. Just wanted to show you um, a couple of things. I want to start off with a site that my wife and I eyeballed and then decided to dig and investigate. Uh, found a barrel tap pretty early. Found this piece, which is some sort of a uh, half of a colonial era candlestick, a cast candlestick. So we thought things were looking pretty good, especially when we got one of these early uh, open work heel plates. They tend to date to pre-Civil War times. I don't know what this big piece is. It certainly sounded good. I almost want to say that's an industrial bucket uh, bale side from a big kettle or something. Obviously it was worn out and broken up there. And we got some uh, some cast musket balls that, uh, that had been turned into fishing weights. So the whole site had some colonial colonialness to it. Old uh, button, those are pretty common work clothes buttons. And then of course, collar stud from the Victorian era and a, and a uh, ring from a suspender. But, you know, it's hard to tell with those things sometimes. Uh, so we're going to go back and hit it again because the answer will be there um, with consistent effort. So um, anyhow, here are my finds. Uh, I've got a gas valve, big clock gear, some ends of pocket knives. These are pretty common work clothes buttons. This N&W button you find all over the state. Um, this one says big, this one says Hercules. This is a piece from a, uh, a saw. Um, they're always beveled and they always show uh, a kind of square on the two pieces that fit together there. Um, uh, top of a lock, some suspender clip pieces, harmonica reed plate, some doll legs, and this very tiny, tiny, tiny doll arm. Goodness, that's just a, it's a size four on it. I wonder what size three, two, and one are. Um, anyhow, got some marbles, one flat button, uh, some uh, white porcelain buttons. This weird piece, it's like some sort of applied decor decoration. It's probably early 1900s, teens, 20s. This AJ Tower and Company slicker button that was broken. These are all white metal. They sound pretty good. 
Got this weird button that has uh, 12 stars on it. And it's just the face of it. I don't know what, what the heck that is. Uh, kind of an unusual find. I like it, I just don't know what it is. Civil War era finds, ruined shell casing. I think this is a, probably a, a broken piece of half of a piece from a McClellan saddle. Got this really nice dropped Colt Dragoon, 44 caliber. I don't know what these buckles are for or from. They always have a little bend there that's, that's actually made into the buckle. And I would love to know what those are for, but I find a lot of those, and I find them in kind of earlier sites. So. Then we have two clothiers buttons. These are pretty fascinating. This first one is Valat Bordeaux. I assume that Valat is the last name, and Bordeaux is France, unless that's a Louisiana name. But that's a clothier button. Three-hole button, so it's probably 1830s or 1840s. And then, similar era, but maybe could be as late as the Civil War, we have, um, looks like, uh, T.P. or T.B. Johnson and Company, Liverpool. So there's an English clothing button there. And we have the uh, broken U.S. Bit Boss, um, which I'm going to go back and try to find more of. Hopefully, I can. Then some more of my finds. These things are uh, are from a uh, um, uh, cloth ruler, um, you know, measuring tape basically, and that would have prop pulled out, and then you would have used that to crank the tape back in. And the crank the tape was worn around this. The only metal pieces, maybe there was a little ring at the end of the tape to keep it from going back inside the spindle, but other than that, this is the only metal piece. Nice Tomac button complete with the shank, um, lead pencil, got both the uh, top notch and the runner from it looks like the same parasol, a little tiny child's parasol. This weird piece that's an eagle, some sort of a cap badge, but or a tie pin or a lapel pin. It's got an eagle clutching a, a key. The key has the heart-shaped loop at the top and the key's bottom is right there and then a flag. Maybe the letter S or maybe it's a banner, weird. My wife's finds, um, got some great uh, stuff here, suspender clips, sock clip, a uh, large cast nail, large cast fork, and then back over here, clay pipe, uh, World War I era button, work clothes button, uh, 1927 wheat, uh, this little tiny bead, I don't know how in the world she eyeballed that. But I think her big find was this uh, Cordeviole and Lacroix button that was dug in the same field as the one that I dug. And so um, that's a, just an incredible find. Those are very well-known uh, free persons of color who were operating as clothiers in influencing fashion and even European fashion between the 1830s and the late 1840s in New Orleans. So great, great find there. Um, so that's the finds wrap up. Catch y'all later.